This episode sponsored by GoToAssist Express. Welcome to the Tech Podcast Network CES 2010 coverage of the Consumer Electronics Show. Hey folks, my name is Todd Cochran. I am the host of the Geek News Central podcast at geeknewscentral.com. I'd like to introduce my guest sitting on my right is Jeffrey Powers. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Hi everybody, my name is Jeffrey Powers of the Geekazine podcast over at geekazine.com. And on my left is Andy McCaskey from SDR News. Yeah, uh, hello, hello. Hello. I think the PA just, uh, just, <laughs> just came on. Hi, I'm Andy McCaskey from SDR News and uh, been a part of the Tech Podcast team here since Monday and have been fighting a real cold since Monday. So uh, if you need a foghorn, I'll yeah, volunteer. You're, you're the foghorn <laughs> for tonight. Hey, we want to give a warm welcome or a warm thank you to NBC Universal mm -hmm. and we want to remind you that, uh, hey, they're covering the 2010 Olympic Games in Vancouver. You're going to want to tune in and watch. They've got some great coverage coming up and we, want, of course, want to thank John Acar Ocarino for uh, making this opportunity available for us today. Mm -hmm. And we've had some great time over in the uh, Sharp Media uh, Blogger Lounge the last couple of days, so uh, thanks to Sharp for sponsoring that as well. Hey, we've got a great show lined up for you today, and those of you that are tuning on the Ustream, we want to welcome you to the show. Make sure you're retweeting us. Our hashtag for this event is t uh, pound TPN CES, and uh, let everyone know that we're up live here in the NBC Universal main stage. We've got a lineup of guests today for you, but Andy, I want to just take a second to ask you, what do you thought about the show so far? Oh, I, I think that it's uh, CES is always a tremendous experience. And we were concerned last year about the, the general uh, uh, condition of the economy that, that the show would be severely contracted this year. That's not been the case. Right. There has been uh, uh, a tremendous amount of traffic that we have seen. Now, I was uh, doing some in, indoor duty today. I wasn't walking the floor today. But uh, the, the first couple of days, the, the traffic seemed, seemed quite heavy. And, you know, this is our fifth year we've been doing this. So uh, it, it looks uh, on the right trajectory to be back uh, with the uh, uh, same size that we've uh, seen in years past. For those of you that are tuning in on Ustream, mm -hmm. we've had a team of nine scouring the floors. And, of course, while we've been doing our daily wrap-up, which is available, of course, again at techpodcast.com, we, uh, we really have been putting a lot of interviews into, I guess, the digital hard drive because we're in the digital world now. There's no more such thing as going to tape. But uh, I tell you, we've got probably close to 100 interviews that are going to be uh, starting posting up over the next uh, week. Lots of great interviews with great products. We're going to be introducing some of the companies today that we have found have some pretty cool products. Now, Jeffrey, you've been doing a lot of stuff on our back channel. Why don't you tell the audience exactly what's going on with our content, how it's being presented across our network? Well, we have two different types of video that's being run. We have the main cameras, of course, two main mm -hmm. camera crews. And then what's called the back channel. Now the back channel is, we take these little devices, these little cameras, whether it be uh, whatever brand it is, high definition, mid definition, low definition, really doesn't matter what they do, as long as they can record what the heck is going on around Consumer Electronics Show. Once we get off the planes, we, we pretty much start these things rolling. So you'll see a whole bunch of cool stuff, where we go, what we do. We even have all the back channel of uh, Todd and Andy running around trying to figure out what cord goes where, what plug goes where uh, for this event. And that was a lot of fun to do. It's, it's, it's right on this camera. So uh, $29.95 if you, if you want to count. Yeah. No, I'm just it's, kidding. It's, it's, it's like, <laughs> well, uh, uh, another, another point to that is uh, our, our primary channel, uh, t the time that we can spend yeah. with a particular product is limited sometimes. And you can go on and back channel and actually, you know, poke the lens right down in the equipment and spend 20 minutes talking with somebody. And, and uh, we have to kind of constrain each other because each of us have geekly interests. And uh, certain products, uh, you, you can't pull Todd away from him. And he's in there and he just will keep, and we keep saying, Todd, we got to go, we got to go, we've got another interview. And it's the same way with you. No, I, no, I, I don't get... I'm not okay. Of course, you never oh, take a sure. long time. Yeah, okay. So anyway, our primary <laughs> channel, which uh, covers our daily wrap-up shows and, of course, all the content of our interviews that we've created. So again, as you go up on those websites, you'll see two or three video streams. Make sure you pay attention to those and uh, lots of great content. 
Well, I don't want to waste any time anymore, and we'll, we're going to start right off with our first guest today. And for some of you out there that are videographers, you're going to be really excited about seeing this product because I think for the first time stream, maybe not uh, first pictures, because I know Rob was the one that got the first pictures of this camera. We have a new red camera that is going to be uh, introduced here. Ted, come on in and sit down and, uh, and join us. Thanks, guys. How are you? Hey. Welcome. Hey. Nice to see you. Welcome to the uh, Tech Podcast Network live event here at CES. Thank you. You know, look at this beautiful camera, and look how small it is. Ted, talk, talk to us about this new camera from RED. It's definitely small. Uh, for those of your viewers that may not know some of the back channel, as you were talking about, about what RED does, we're a, a cinema company. We make digital cinema cameras. We don't make video cameras. Um, surprising maybe to some people that, to hear me say that, but none of our cameras would be considered or constrained as a video device. They are raw, high resolution, progressive frame making machines. Um, so the Red One, which has been shipping for a couple of years, is out in the cinema world has, has really become uh, almost a de facto standard now for digital cinema use. There are thousands of them. Um, pointers of people kind of go, oh, that's the camera that did that. Uh, District 9, the movie District 9, which uh, came out over the summer, yep. became a big hit. That was all shot with red cameras. There's a movie next week that comes out, a very big budget movie with Denzel Washington called Book of Eli. You may have been seeing the oh, yeah. posters around Vegas and stuff and uh, all over the world. That's all shot with red cameras. The last half of the last season of ER shot with red cameras. TV shows on um, A&E and TNT, Leverage, Cleaner. Shot with red cameras, Tracy Ullman show, shot with red cameras, wow. um, Sarah Silverman show, shot with red cameras. List goes on and, <laughs> on and on and on and on and on, right? So while I understand this is a prototype, and can you talk to a little bit about this new new device and what it's going to cost and the specs and all, yeah. all the techie stuff that uh, geeks love? Absolutely. So the point of bringing all that up is <laughs> as we drive into this world, into the more technology and what it means is there's um, a lot of you know big movies, Steven Soderbergh and Peter Jackson and among others working with the Red One cameras, and there are two new cameras coming out from Red. One's called Epic and one's called Scarlet. This is, happens to be a Scarlet prototype, which will come out uh, late spring into the summer of this year. So uh, I'm here kind of running around showing it off and doing these kind of things um, in their earliest stages. Uh, the This is kind of like the, the little sister of the of the Red One. It's a 3K resolution device. The Red One is a 4K device. So That's Red amazing. One is about five times the resolution of HD, which is why it looks so good when you go to the movies and see a movie. Um, this is something that can really fit into a lot of people's hands, just like mine or yours. Uh -huh. This doesn't have the hand grip on it yet, but it okay. will when it ships, obviously. It looks um, like a little iPod back here. Yeah, that's actually called the Red Moat. It's, it's our version of a remote called the Red Moat. pops off, oh. and you're able to control essentially all the functionality of the camera remotely via Wi-Fi. So you can put this camera on a small jib arm or a crane or something, and no wires, and go and drive it. Oh, I see. you got a little thumb thing right here. You could actually control it with one hand. That's, yeah, that's really that's nice. that's the idea. And you get a heads-up display looking at a histogram, so you know your exposure, you can see your formats that you're shooting, and um, a bunch of uh, information that you need, mm -hmm. and then uh, the rest of the set is looking at you know the video output. In, in full resolution. Th this thing? is all um, information display. Information. Oh, information. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, okay. Yeah. I'm and then there's a bunch of other monitoring pathways like HDMI and whatnot to see pictures. Wow. So I know in the past many of the uh, components of the RED camera have been modulized. What do you expect the price point, or have they announced a price point for this yet? Is modulized a real word? Because if so, I'm going to use okay. it. <laughs> it's a I'm going to incorporate it into it, my word. It, it's, 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 it's a totism. Tot 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 Everyone yes. get used to it. Yeah. I just, I, I've been using the old school word modular, but <laughs> modular, I'm going to try okay. modulize. That's good. Sorry. Couldn't resist. It's okay. Um, you're, you're, but you're absolutely right. That's why I'm making light of it. Um, the whole concept of these new cameras, both the Epic and this Scarlet, mm -hmm. is modularity, is the, the logic of how you build and shrink the camera for any given use. So the way this works is, there's stuff that goes between here and here that links in via these super high speed connectors. You lock it up and you put different types of modules for the kind of shooting you're doing. So the Scarlet I brought here is a uh, removable lens Scarlet, meaning this is really designed for kind of the indie cinema shooter, um, someone that wants to shoot raw and move it through this post workflow that we've developed with companies like Apple and, and other kind of Adobe that uh, work with us on making the post production logical and, and right. simple. Um, but you add different modules to essentially optimize for the kind of shooting you're doing. So if I need to run this out to the set and a whole bunch of people need to see audio and video inputs and outputs, we put a module on. If I need to do an all-day battery configuration, we put a module on for that. But the beauty of it is, at any given time, 
I can take those modules off and go down to this configuration and shoot handheld or low mini study camera on your little your little uh, run around um, yeah, yeah, yeah. sort of poor man study cam stick kind of concept and drop the the red mode on there or take it off and shoot it this way. I brought you know one of the many viewing options. This is a what we call the bomb EVF, which is a small, super high resolution viewing device. There's also small LCDs that you can mount anywhere. The whole idea is non-restrictive. We want the, this is the brain, this is the camera itself, and then you just kind of build and create your world around it so that you shoot how you want to shoot. Pop a grip on this and go. Ted, what, the what was the, the hardest technical t challenge that you had in developing this camera? Um, I would say probably the most significant breakthrough is, uh, there are two things. Building the sensor, which we create ourselves, we have our own sensor team that works inside the red environment and creates the red sensor. Um, so it doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. The red one sensor only is in a red one. These sensors are only in these devices and we're building a whole array of them, different sizes and different resolutions, all well beyond HD. HD is just kind of a downstream effect for us. We're all about super high resolution. Um, and then the other part is the science of what we call red code, which is our our secret sauce, if there was any secret sauce per se, is uh, a special codec technology that allows us to shoot these super high res raw images and record them on a, a small compact flash card, um, way beyond HD resolution. Wow. So that's a specialized codec that we've developed that um, drives these machines. So those two things are the most significant real but IP. The rest of it's a bunch of hard work too, but uh, those are the two probably biggies. Very exciting, and uh, again, do they have a price point on what this they, is going to They do have a target price point. Everything while it's in engineering mode is always a little liquid, but we're, we're honing in pretty good. This body, the brain only is uh, under $3,000, uh, 2750 is the target price. And then there's a, um, a more sort of, not every man, I don't want to say, it's not the right word, but a more kind of everybody's going to use it type configuration that has a fixed 8 by zoom. It's a complete shooting kit, comes with a, a viewing LCD and essentially right out of the box ready to go shoot with it. That's under 5,000, 4750. That's pretty exciting for yeah. Red. Well, Ted, I want, thank, I want to thank you for taking time with us and My to pleasure. show us this. And uh, good luck with the launch. And hey, we'll, we'll, we'll review one for you when yeah. you get them ready. I'm looking forward to you guys shooting it and telling you what you think. <laughs> Where's the website? Really quick. Oh, Red.com. Real red. easy to, it's all Red. So Red.com is <laughs> how you find us. Thank Thanks you very so much. Thanks, thank guys. You. Appreciate Thanks. it. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, indeed, wow. indeed. You, you think about that, the technology that is available in a camera that size, and you know, even from what we started, we've come down in size in our cameras as well, mm -hmm. even though today we're show, show, shooting with a, a significantly bigger camera. Well, and then but, also pushing pushing the frontiers, the, the yield issues that they would have, right? and then coupling that into a rugged device. Yep. Uh, it's a lot of te technology problems that have to be solved. Now, Andy, this next guest, I'm going to tell oh, you. I haven't seen this. No, yeah, this. All is right, beautiful. this is the one I, when I saw it, I said, "Aha!" And yeah, uh, actually, this. this product was our day one product of the day. We fought first uh, fiercely over five or six products and what we thought were cool. And I want to introduce Chris Palsy, and he is from Maplock, and he's going to introduce something that a lot of you are going to be very interested in. Andy, did you know that the number one thing stolen out of uh, automobiles in the United States are GPSs? I don't care about that. It's when they bust the window to get in. <laughs> so, Chris... Adding insult, injury to insult. Chris, you have a product that is maybe going to stop thieves from breaking windows and yanking out GPSs out of our cars. What, what have you got here? Absolutely. Um, well, firstly, on the theft problem, you're right. It is a huge problem, and it doesn't just stop at the lost job GPS, so whether that's $200, it's $300 for the window, yeah. and now the thieves are getting too smart, and with the home function on your GPS, they've got your home address, and they're going back and stealing things out of your house. So the problem is so much bigger than just your GPS alone. Wow. Um, so we've got MapLock, which is the anti-theft solution, which is the first in the world. Um, basically, there's a two-phase scenario. Uh, you connect the cable through the steering wheel to keep it within the cabin of the car, connects up to the MapLock device, um, and clamps onto anything from a 3.5 to 5-inch GPS, um, which cover all the major brands, all the major models. And um, yeah, people will no longer get your GPS. Chris, the first question I was asked when we talked about this is, why not just take the GPS off your windshield and stuck it, stick it in the glove box? Why, why 
why buy this? Yeah. So I think I know what your answer is, but I'll let you go ahead. Well, there's um, a couple of reasons. Thieves are looking for little telltale marks on the suction on the suction cap on the windows. Um, they're watching people come into car parks. So even if you wipe it down and put it under your seat, you you're still being watched. So thieves are still finding a way to know that you have a GPS somewhere in the car. If you don't have the GPS and you've taken it with you and they've watched you or, you, or you, they just see the little suction cup, they're still breaking your window. They might not get your GPS, but you're still out of pocket for $300. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, yeah. So do you reasons. believe then you, the approach you're taking is by them seeing this, I mean, this is, you know, we know what I called this. <laughs> I called this the club for GPS. Yeah. Actually, Excellent. you called it the club for GPS. I was taking <laughs> credit better. away from That's Jeffrey. Better. Yeah. Yeah. Credit was credit was due. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, it's a, it, you know, so when people see that, they're going to say, oh, it's not even worth it, and walk away. That's yeah. Absolutely. Move on to the next vehicle. And we're, it's available in five high visibility colors, so keep it up on your windscreen, and the thief can clearly see that there's a lock on your GPS, and they're not going to get it. So move on, and they, they just won't get through this lock to get your GPS. Now, what, what kind of what GPS is that? It, does it fit all makes and models, or, or is it totally yeah. universal on this? Well, case? if it's anything from a 3.5 to 5-inch GPS, which covers anything from Garmin's, TomTom's, Navigon's, all the major brands, and well, on our... 300 plus models that we cover so yeah we've got the market covered for 95 percent of the gps market awesome and what was the price point on this going to be uh 49.95 can they find it today online it's being pre-sold it's available uh, late march and but pre-sold on amazon amazon.com very good well i tell you this is pretty exciting uh, this is definitely a new product i have not seen anything like this yet yeah. so i think you guys are first in the marketplace on this good luck with the product maplock.com uh, GPSmaplock.com. GPSmaplock.com. I, I know I'm going to get a GPS so I can get a GPS map lock. <laughs> <laughs> I like the thinking. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. No thank you very much yep. for your time. Thanks, Chris. So, Andy? You know, often some of the most elegant ideas are the simplest. That's right. And when you come here to CES, you, you, there are a lot of things that are, are kind of rehashed technology. Or, you know, they've been improved. Yep. But then you see things, it's just like, oh, why didn't I think of that? You know, they're, they're, they're going to make several million dollars on this Absolutely. Easy. You know, Absolutely. Just, in, just, you know, you're thinking, well, they, they stole my GPS. I don't want them to steal my GPS again. And it's so simple, it's it's mm. crazy. Oh, and it's not only the money. It's it's the hassle of getting back and forth to the dealer. You know, you, 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 it's just a lot of... Calling uh, the insurance company. Call the insurance Let's claim. That, yeah, so yeah. There's a lot of, of <laughs> hidden expense in that sort of a, that sort of a break -in. Now, if you... If you uh, I was going to say that. I lost my train of thought. I don't know, but I'm, <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's all the bright lights. So. <laughs> yeah. well, uh, I'm just going to see how you're going to transition to our next guest. Okay, yeah. this next, I, I will say that these, these, this next company, there's going to be a video that's going to be forthcoming. There will shall, be, yes. You need to watch for this video. Shall be uh, entertaining. Um, I was, entertaining. I was uh, drafted or asked you were to drafted. volunteer yeah, you were drafted. to do a demo on something, and maybe we'll do it again. So we're going to invite. Daniel in from Utopia with earbuds and uh, Daniel. Done. We had a lot of fun the other night. We didn't did. We? we definitely had a great time the other and, night. And uh, so what we're going to do here is Jeffrey. Actually, I don't know if we can. Uh, I don't know. What sizes did you bring? Did you just bring so, one size? I did bring a couple sizes with me. I remember Todd from the other night that you are in fact a size eight. So That's I have correct. that on hand right here. But I do have a range of sizes with me. So our company is called Yourtopia. The product here is Yourbuds Earbud Enhancers. And what we do is we use any digital imaging device, particularly our new iPhone application, to scan your ear, size the shape, contour, and size of the ear to get you fitted for Yourbuds Earbud Enhancers, make it to your headphones, and Bluetooth headsets will literally never fall out of your ears again. Now, I was telling Daniel at, at the event that we were at, I said, every earbud that I ever put in my ear has fell out. I, cannot, I have to wear over-the-cuff earbuds when I'm in my studio at home. I, I stick a Bluetooth headset in, and it falls out. It just drives me insane. So we did a little demo, and I may have to re-demo here because it's going to be a lot of fun. It is a lot of but fun. But why don't you so. show them just the, kind of we'll walk through the process, take the picture real Absolutely. quick. Absolutely. And uh, I don't know if we can zoom in on the, uh, on the uh, iPhone or not. But uh, we'll get as close as we can. So, how many of you, how many out in the audience have trouble keeping a, a headset in your ears? Does the hands go up? We got a number of people saying so. It's it's what happens, right? Okay, let's go ahead. So basically, we're able to use a reference object here. So if you want to take a quarter there, 
You can put it up against your ear. So using the reference object, we're able to click Get Sized on our application. Take a digital image of the ear by pressing anywhere on the screen. And you can and do this from home, folks. You, you can do this from home. And just there, it's actually going to come up. Show it's me he's a size the eight. Yep, let me show oh, you right there. We knew that. And yeah, wait, <laughs> hey, there's a quarter in your ear. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> and, and it's the old trick being reused right there. We have the quarter in your ear. Never did you know, though, that that quarter was going to be what was going to make your earbuds fit to your ear for the first time. So That's I have right. your size eight, Todd, right here. OK. And I'm going to lean over, and I'm going to let him put him in. And then we're going we're gonna to. Excellent. So. <laughs> so literally, when they're going into your ear, they just turn and lock right into place, just like that. It's about a quarter of a turn down. They lock right in. So Todd, I know you remember what you did the other night. <laughs> <laughs> as they didn't come out, did they? As no. vigorously did as he's going to shake there, they're I, not going to come the, out. Uh, I'm still mine. So. You're still, still mine. <laughs> you're, 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 wired, you're wired for sound. You're ready to go. You're your iPhone. And your not, not only do they fit well. <laughs> I, uh, I, I actually, Daniel was nice enough to give me a pair, and I know you've been fitting people all week. Absolutely. I played uh, some music last night as winding down from the show. They really do sound good, too. Exactly. So the three things the product do generally is, one, you never have to worry about your headphones falling out again. Two, both your headphones and your Bluetooth, for the first time ever, can be worn for long periods of time without them hurting your ears like mad. The last thing is, it does increase the sound quality. It also lets you listen, generally at about 10 to 30 percent reduced volume. Now, one thing we didn't do here was, what he did was he took an iPod, was an iPod Nano, and yep. he had it in his ears. He actually dropped it to the ground and shook it around. Now, how many times have you had that iPod on, on your desktop, and, and you're just listening to the tunes, working away, and all of a sudden, oh, i got to go to the kitchen to get a cup of coffee. You go and you walk away, all of a sudden, the, that iPod just falls to the ground. Your earbuds just pull you back, and it's just horrible. This or they, one... Or they just fall out. Yeah, they just fall right. out, yeah. Right, right. Uh, these will uh, just make them swing back and forth, and, and exactly. maybe they'll just swing it up so you can catch it. The just earbuds cool. pendulum. Yep. Yep. So yep. What's, the important thing is, how much do they cost? So the earbuds themselves are only $20. You can get our earbuds with our ear phones, and that price point is only $30. But we do go right on your exceptional devices that you already have at home. The product is available both on our website at yourbuds.com. We're also available at bestbuy.com and in Best Buy mobile stores around the United States. You might tell about the, about the history, about the, the, your founder, your company exactly. founders. Exactly. So the CEO of our company was actually a marathoner. He was doing three to six hour workouts. And every time he'd be out there, he'd come home. His body would not be hurting him, but his ears would be. And he thought that was absolutely <laughs> ludicrous. So he teamed up with our chief operating officer, who had a background in materials, who was also running quite a bit and had his earbuds falling out all the time. And between the two of them, they decided we have to be able to solve this solution. And henceforth came the Yearbud. Absolutely great product, Very and uh, we had a lot of fun with it. Good luck to Yearbuds. Thank you. Any Very comments, much. guys? I think they're great. Yeah, it's a great, great product. Good guys, job. it was excellent meeting you. Thank Thanks you again for having us on the show. And make sure you tell them where you can find this, of course. Again, find us at www.yearbuds.com, at specialty retail running stores across the United States, and at www.bestbuy.com. There you go. All right, Daniel, thank you so much. Guys, have a good one. Yeah. You know, th those of you that don't know, in my previous life, I, uh, I spent 24 years in the United States Navy before I figured out this new media thing and figured out how to really not have a day job. And uh, there was this, you know, saying you never volunteer for anything. Of course, you know, you're, you're a prior Army Ranger, and uh, what did they call it with you guys? Well, a demonstrator or, yeah, or so, wind dummy, depending so, upon. But, you know, so I was, I was a demonstrator, so I hope you had a little fun with, on my we behalf. Did. <laughs> we did. You know, we do um, uh, uh, many, many interviews, probably 120, 150 interviews during the, during the week. Yep. We get a little punchy, and, and, you know, we finally decide, why not have some fun? And we try and bring that in from time to time, not only in the back channel, but it, it creeps into some of our formal interviews as well. Yes. Hey, I do want to take a moment and let you all know that uh, my team that's come out here to uh, Vegas this year, we've done so under the sponsorship of, of Citrix Go to Assist Express. Um, they're a great company. It's a great product for those of you looking for an IT solution for helping with consulting to uh, managing computer systems. And uh, Jeffrey, you know, what, you've had some uh, good experience with uh, GoToAssist. What's your experience been? Oh, I've, I've used GoToAssist. I'm, I'm an old IT 
hound. I did IT work. I did uh, IT administration, and I've worked on all these programs. I remember the days that you would have to have somebody call up on the uh, phone line, dial into their phone through their phone line, and try and do all this stuff. It was horrible, and trying to connect up there. And then, of course, I also did phone support, so trying to remember you know, doing things and saying, okay, hit the start button, go here, go there, and they're not really up on that. That's right. When we went into website development and, and, and website uh, being able to connect via the website, it was great. And there were a lot of products that were out there, but when I saw Citrix and go to Assist Express, I was completely amazed. I call it an, an essential need for your IT toolbox. If you do not have any program like this in your IT toolbox, you owe it to yourself to get this program on your in your IT toolbox for at least 30 days. Try it out, let us know what you think because we want to know so we can take the feedback back to them and improve the product. And the best thing is you get a free 30 day trial. Go to assist.com forward slash tech podcast for your free 30 day trial. And thanks for go to assist for sponsoring us here at CS 2010. Okay, the next up, Andy, is a product that you initially found and uh, so we've got Alex from Connectify coming up. Alex, we've talked hey time and again, but I'm not sure we've met. Yeah, good yeah, finally good, good person. Good likewise. Thanks for having likewise. me. We'll just wave. <laughs> so I know we've got a number of Windows 7 users that are watching the yep. show right now. So Alex, tell us about Connectify. So Connectify is a free wireless personal area network software for Windows 7. So you install it on your Windows 7 computer and it turns your computer into a Wi-Fi hotspot, which is you know, good for at least three things. One, sharing your internet. So if you're somewhere, a hotel or whatever, that charges you, you know, $10 per computer to get on the internet, you can just get on once with one computer and everyone you're with mm -hmm. can use the same connection. You know, if you have a Verizon card and you're traveling, the people with you can you know, connect. Just They don't need the software, they just connect to a regular Wi-Fi access point. It's really your computer. Uh, Two, there's a lot of mobile office groupware stuff, right? So if you're on the road, you can share files with your coworkers or play a LAN game, you know, shoot them up, right. works great. And the third thing is the really personal area network stuff. And th this is only be becoming clear now, right? Having your camera directly send the pictures to your computer with no network. Using your iPhone, this is my new favorite. Uh, I've got a program I, I just purchased on the, the you know, app store called Wi-Fi Remote. So now my iPhone can connect directly to my PC, and its touch screen is a trackpad for my computer. Mm. So it's an instant you know, presentation remote. Right? I, so I can walk around with just my iPhone in hand, ru running my presentation, going you know, forward, back, controlling the computer. I think to make it clear for everybody, really this is an application that you download from, uh, from Alex's website and install it. It takes 45 seconds to install. The application comes up and asks for a few settings. And then immediately, you can activate the Wi-Fi hotspot from within your Windows 7 machine and, and log peripherals into it. It's completely secure. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about uh, someone else logging. It's just as secure as a regular Wi-Fi yep. hotspot. WPA2 encryption. And it's just, it works out really well. So I've been using it in a hotel oh, room. Good. Same yeah. thing, because you know some of the hotels have gotten tricky. You, s you plug in a second computer to, a, to maybe your network, maybe you're using a wireless router or something, and say, oh, oh you've used a second computer, right. pay us another fourteen ninety five a month. Right, uh, and a month. A week, a, a, a day, day, a day. A day. <laughs> a day. <laughs> Yep. A day, and uh, with this, I've been able to essentially connect up multiple machines and actually multiple devices. So yep. they they all look like one computer. I think you'd be surprised how many people travel with two machines. Right. I mean, yes. I, I often often do that, and uh, particularly then when a work group gets together, um, or a conference room situation where there's only one uh, LAN connection coming yep. into the room. And nowadays, with the iPhones and other smart devices. Mm -hmm. You can you try and connect up, and you got to deal with the 3G. I know we've we've been having some 3 3G issues throughout the uh, throughout the week here. We can actually connect up through our laptops through Connectify and get that going from there. Good, so you're really using it, huh? It, it is. It's easy. Yeah. I mean, it's anyone can set this up. We have a Windows 7 machine. So, Alex, where can they find Connectify? Is it it's Connectify.com? I'm assuming. Connectify.me. Connectify.me. Dot me. Connectify me. Okay. That's right. Connectify me. Yes. So be careful about that. <laughs> and uh, by the way, what does it cost? It's free. It's free. Oh, free. 
Yes. Oh. <laughs> and, so, and so the core software is free and yeah. will always be free. We're just giving it away as a gift. And uh, ultimately, we'll have some premium versions with more features that we'll charge for. But this core access point stuff, we're just giving away. You know. This is this is a great way to extend the the potential or actually usability of your Windows 7 machine. It's a product that I think all three of us are using. Mm -hmm. um, even though both of us own a variety of different operating systems, uh, it really comes in handy. It really does. Yeah. So, and I think the other thing, if you, if you are still holding on to that XP machine, right? It's this sort of capability that says, you know, it's time for an upgrade. Yep. Yeah. That's good. Alex, thank you so much All for right, spending no, time with us. Thank you for having me. Appreciate thank you it. Very much. Thank you. Thanks. Good finally meeting you. You know, when I when Bye. we talked to Alex before, right, and you actually set it up right in the telephone call. Yes. And you're oh. like, wow, I'm online. already connected. I'm online. And I yes. said, yeah. and it was just seconds, really. To actually, get it that's, set up. that was one reason why I had the laptop up here is we were supposed to do the Connectify through there. Oh, I completely forgot about it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All this back and forth. But that's okay. We, I, if you don't have, if you really want a good understanding. Connectify.me, that's where you need to go. Okay, this, this next guest is well known on the internet. There's lots of videos. You guys have all seen Make Magazine. You guys are all familiar with it. Uh, I think you're all going to be very excited to see what we're going to introduce. Bree, come on in. And this is Andy's show oh, here. Oh, hey, 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 Good to see you. How are you? Yeah. Very good. Yeah, very good. Right good to see you again. You guys yeah. are putting on the show today. Yeah, we're, we're having a good time, you know, getting a little geeky and uh, talking to the folks on Ustream. And, of course, this will go up live later as a podcast as well. Andy went absolutely, absolutely. nuts. <laughs> you know, I'm, we're, we're doing our discussion yesterday about our product pick of the day. And he's explaining this thing to me. And I'm looking at it. And, you know, You're not getting it. And I wasn't getting it. And finally, he kind of described it enough. Why don't, Andy, I'll let you t take over. Go ahead. Well, what finally, I think, turned the corner was your little sticker. This is the closest thing to the Jetsons that we will see in our lifetime. Because uh, Rabe, he bought that little whistle over here for a reason. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and among other things. you tell me these things. <laughs> um, and Bree, maybe you can explain a little bit about uh, MakerBot and uh, this little desk toys that you have there in your hands. Sure. So uh, and I'm hopefully going to hand around so we can uh, play with them here. I've already. I'm. You don't want to stick your that on in oh, your mouth. Okay, okay. I won't. Uh, so yeah, the MakerBot. <laughs> it's this. It's a 3D printer, and it's affordable and it's open source. They're 950. You go to makerbot.com and you get one. And you down you uh, you download it. We ship it to you, and then uh, and then you put it together. It takes a weekend with a friend, and then you have a 3D printer that can print out almost anything on your desktop. Now, folks, you just heard him say 3D printer. Now, imagine printing. You don't really print this. Yeah, well, what, the way it works is it brings in a filament of ABS, which is the same material that Lego, that Lego is made right. out of. Okay. And it heats it up, and it extrudes it through a very small hole, and then it draws. So it draws a first layer, then it lifts up a little bit and draws a second layer on top of that. And layer by layer, it makes a 3D object. So oh, we have a cool. foosball table, and we needed a replacement foosball man. And so we just, uh, Adam modeled one up, and we printed one out. And that's really... It's really durable. It's, you can, it can take a licking. It this takes this takes a serious beating on our foosball table. Yeah, it does look like a like a bar of soap carved, but it's really it's it's, it's nice. Uh, now Last. we've had a tendency on this on the, our shows to break stuff before, so we'll have to be careful, right, Andy? Uh, only if it gets thrown uh, yeah, at. That's right. No need to bring no need to bring that no need to bring that up from a prior. Don't throw anything yes. at that TV. So or that how is. long yeah. would it take the printer? to print a whistle. A whistle takes about 15 minutes. Okay. This will take you about 45 minutes. And the cool thing is, like, this is probably, you know, 25 cents of plastic. So if you do break it, it's just robot time to rebuild it. Uh, let's, let's move for just a little bit in this whistle, because the thing that, that was so impressive to me, if you think about teleportation, science fiction standard, yeah. how does that, from the time that whistle was the product of someone's mind, Okay. What happened after that, and how long did it take? So a guy named Zago in Germany designed this. It looks just like a regular referee whistle. Mm -hmm. And within half an hour, people around the world had printed it out. He uploaded it, and everybody was twittering about it. And uh, we, he uploaded it to a site called Thingiverse we have, which is an object yeah. sharing site. It's kind of like YouTube, except instead of uploading videos, you upload object files. 
and then anybody can download them and make them themselves. Now the cool thing is, is like within half an hour, he had gotten this whistle in all sorts of places around the planet, because people all around the world have MakerBots and we're printing them out. And you just can't, you know, I mean, yeah. you can't, like, I printed one out in New York, and you can't get a whistle from Germany to you know, yeah. New York in under a half an hour unless you like put it's on a missile. It's interesting you use the word the planet, because that's a different perspective. Yeah. So design locally, build globally. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ask a, a little deeper question. Some, some of the viewers may be saying, oh, that looks like it's hard to do. So what program are people using? AutoCAD? What are they using to actually make the product or design the product? Well, the cool thing is, is all you need to make an object from a 3D file is an STL file. And STL is short for stereolithography. It's a really old school 3D modeling format. And everything will export an STL file. Then we have a program that's open source called Skyneforge, and uh, a guy named Enrique developed that. And it slices it, and it makes a toolpath, and turns it into G-code, which is also very old school. It's XYZ coordinates and, and speed. You must be absolutely, I, I know, I see your stuff all over the place. You must be geeking out completely on this thing. <laughs> you know, um, I've, we were promised growing up that there would be moon bases, flying cars, flying and, car? and robots that would you know, <laughs> yeah. make things at your command. Well. We got one of them at least so far. This what's, is, what's the craziest thing that you've ever made? Um, the craziest or thing. What's I've the, ever what's made. the wildest thing anyone has ever made? Or anybody's yeah. ever made. You know, somebody have, uh, recently uploaded, they had a Pinewood Derby. And they just took the basic block and they didn't do anything to it. And they printed out two halves of a Volkswagen bus, you know, old school style. Right. And they glued them together. And I don't know if they won or not, but they had the coolest looking Pinewood Derby. <laughs> you know, nice. Volkswagen bus, like this, uh, like this size. It was really cool. So, so this can actually, could you use this in a lost wax casting type of process to actually convert it to metal? There's a, um, there's a bunch of uh, molds on Thingiverse for chocolate, where you take oh, two parts <laughs> and you put it together and there's a little hole and you inject hot chocolate into it and it cools down and then you, know, you undo it. And there's, it's a, it's a chocolate icosahedron mold. So it, 20 sided die out of chocolate. I mean, it doesn't get any nerdier than it that. It doesn't. Get that that yeah. Yeah. Well, considering how much some of those actual little dice cost the ladies to buy, there's actually might be a market for that. Yeah, and that's the great <laughs> thing is when you have one of these things, it's just a matter of time before you can print something out. And usually you can print something out in less time than it would take you to go to the store. Uh, we got to change, Todd. I'm going to have to pull you back because you're starting to geek out on this. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> okay, so again, what is the price point on the MakeBot, and where can they find it? Yep. Go ahead. Okay, you can get a MakerBot at Maker. MakerBot.com, okay. and um, we'll ship it out to you, and then you put it together, and it's 950 bucks for the deluxe kit, which comes with most of the tools you need, and six pounds of plastic, which will keep you printing for a long time. Wow. I'm going to tell you. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to see this, and they're going to say, I have to have one of these just because. Yeah, I, that makes me happy. I want everybody to have the ability to make anything they want at their home. Yeah. Very, very cool. And remember that 30 years ago, with the Altair computer, it was the same phenomenon. It's the same feeling Andy, that's happening here. It's showing your age. Well, I know. It's similar, though. <laughs> Yeah, it's similar. The old, uh, the the 3D printers out there in the world are mostly like really mainframe size machines, and right. it is kind of like the like the Altair 8800, where you know back then they were like, okay, there's only you only need 10 computers in the world, and the Altair 8800 came out, and it was like, oh, you can have one on your desktop. This, and now you can have a 3D printer on your desktop. It's kind of similar. Perfect. Very cool. Bree, thank you so All much right, for guys. joining us today. Keep up the good work here at CES, and I'll see you around on the floor. Outstanding. Thank you, sir. Good, thanks. <laughs> Andy, I really, when you were describing I told it you to it was going to happen. I, my brain <laughs> I couldn't, cons, you know, I couldn't construe what you're trying to describe to me. I couldn't imagine a printer that would print a whistle. Oh, it's, it's like a super accurate glue gun that yeah, just yeah. Knows, <laughs> knows where to go in three dimensions. And you know we all have ideas for inventions, yeah. and you think to yourself, yeah. if I could only make it, that would be a perfect uh, item to do. Or from a retro standpoint, if you can't get the knob on that radio that you're oh, restoring, yeah, never of that you either. can make a new one. Or go. how about this? You're an you're a inventor, yeah. and you've thought of an idea, and you have a shell casing design, and you need to 
have that bid out maybe in China or some other place and they, and they have sure. a machine, they could print out your design and develop the spec. It's, it gets has beyond, you know, it's, it's obviously a poor man's modeling system, but still it's very, it's very unique. Just as yeah. long as you but know how to make it, an STL. Th that's right. And, and these commercial machines, as I understand it, are from twenty-five to $200,000. Right, and right. And now it's just... Uh, you know, a, a thousand dollar machine. Yeah, well, maybe we can use the mold to make this next product. I don't think. I don't think the mold. You can make a copy of it. You you can make a make, copy you of can, it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you you're can right, make right. a little uh, <laughs> chess piece out of it. Now, you guys all know that uh, Andy and I and, and Jeffrey are podcasters. We uh, live and die behind the mic. And today, I'm very pleased to introduce to invite uh, John Mayer from Blue from Blue Mic to come up, and we're going to be talking about the Yeti. And I am totally psyched about this mic. John, welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. Hello, John. Good to see you. Hello. You know, when uh, Tyler called me, I actually called Tyler, and we were working on some things for the uh, podcast awards, and he says, oh, we got this new mic out. Have you heard about it? And I had read the press release before, but I didn't fully understand the significance until I did a little research. Yeah. This is the first mic to ever get a THX certification, correct? That, that is correct. And it's also uh, one of the few mics and maybe the, the only in the consumer space that we're in with a triple capsule array. So we'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, THX is... Uh, expanded out a little bit into input devices and so this is the first time that they've actually built a spec uh, and we're the first guys to kind of get run through that gauntlet and we're happy that uh, it all worked out and we got approved and we're shipping now as the first THX approved mic. So. Great. When I was at your booth yesterday it was my first chance to actually talk into it or speak into it and I really thought that I was speaking into a thousand dollar condenser mic it had great resonance great depth and it really blew me away it really did well one of the things i mean blue started as a recording studio microphone company right. and that's the fun we're having is taking that kind of quality and putting it into a lot more people's hands and uh, what's great about the three capsules that are in there is that it allows you to do some fun things to give you that warmth and that presence that sort of natural sound so there's two capsules uh, pointing at you from this space here, and then there's a third capsule in the back. So you've got a lot of different options, and on the back here there's a pattern select switch that allows you to choose those. Um, and the one that you probably listened to yesterday, my favorite one, is the stereo mode. It's not just the two capsules, but it actually bleeds in some of the room sound and the back capsules for a real natural, sort of more organic sound. Out Could of you it. use that for like an interview, uh, a one-on-one -on -one interview where it's like this? Exactly. So there's another uh, switch or another one of the patterns, which is a figure eight. So then now you could speak into this side and I can speak into this side. So it's very controllable. And, you know, I think the audience should know this, is, this doesn't require an XLR cable. This requires a plug into your USB on your computer. Right. So while the interface here is, I haven't even looked at the bottom of it. Yeah, so there's a the USB plug. You can yep, also USB. take it off the stand and mount it on another stand if right. you want to do something else right. with it. Um, and, and all our products are plug and play, so there's no disc or drivers or anything that you've got to mess with. You plug it in and you go. You also have monitoring as well? Uh, yeah, so well, we did this, you know, the Snowball was the, the, the product that uh, really put us in the consumer space and this is sort of the step up from that. A lot of our customers asked for some of these features. So what we added to this is a, a really nice quality high output um, headphone amplifier. So you can now plug a headphone in, control the volume, you can mute the mic and still hear the, the headphone uh, input or output. Um, so that, that was kind of an extra feature that everybody asked for. We also have now a gain switch, so or gain control. And that just means if you have a real soft thing you want to record, you can crank up the gain. If you've got a real loud voice or something else, you can turn down the gain. So is, a lot more control. Is that battery driven then, or is it all through the USB? All through USB. Wow. So. Now, the thing that amazed me was, and I told you that it sounded like a, a really expensive mic. But when I found out the price point, I literally almost fell out of my chair. $149. $149. That's yep. crazy. Yeah. The guys how, do how, are you making it, how are you making any money on that? Well, you know, these guys, I have to say, the engineering team did an, an awesome job. And it's, this is not off-the-shelf stuff either. So if you, if you look inside, Brian, who heads up the development team, is so proud of this product. 
Um, and it actually has two discrete cards. There's an analog card and a digital card and very discrete components on it so you don't get any crosstalk or issues with the headphone coming back and the, and the audio input going through. So the guys did an amazing job and we actually were able to get to our target price point. We were nervous there for a while and we kept looking at it too and going, you know, we can't, we gotta, we're going to have to sell this for more. Everybody thinks it's you know, twice the price or three times the price. So. Wow. For those of you watching on Ustream, the first person to email me at geeknews at gmail.com with the word Yeti in the subject line, you will win a free t-shirt of the, that they specially designed here for CES that I have for you. First person to email me right now, you get that. I'm not going to sell your email to any spam list. It'll all be deleted afterwards, but first person to email me on Ustream can do that. So, very cool We stuff. also have, uh, this is the art director's uh, masterpiece, and this is what the t-shirt looks like. It's got <laughs> these funny little Yetis on it, so. We have some fun Point with this it. this way, then. Yeah, there you go. So, pretty amazing mic for $149. It's exciting stuff coming out of Blue. Of course, where can they find, John, where can they find this mic at? We just started shipping uh, uh, in December, and, you know, major retailers, both on the, actually the professional musician side as well as the uh, consumer retailers, so Apple stores, Amazon, guitar centers, those kinds of stores. So they're all out there and, and selling away. Trying to keep up with production is the problem right now. So, yeah. Well, thank you for introducing us to the Yeti. Guys, check it out on Blue, Blue Mike. And, uh, Blue, it's Blue.com or Blue Mike. It's actually Blue Mike.com. Blue Mike.com. Yeah. yeah, okay. Great. John, thank you so very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Appreciate John. it. Six wow. very cool products. Absolutely. It's amazing. But, Does, go but, ahead. Yeah, before you run out, just a comment on the, on the Blue Mike. I just can't help but, but be struck by how affordable that is right and how in just five years since we've both been in podcasting that the level of quality has come up yep. that is still affordable to someone who wants to become involved in podcasting or new media as well well you know i actually did bring my blue snowball mic that's what i did my podcast with this week hooked up the usb i did my show set it to a nice level and it came out great so i love i love the blue mic as a snowball mic i love to get my hands on the yeti and find out how that sound is going to enhance plus it looks like a professional mic so if you have a show like this you have these mics on the table probably you'll know the difference if it's usb or if it's xlr yeah. six six products we got quite a range here yeah we do so andy yeah. what's on the table what's what's left what are we doing next I think it's time to wrap up and to thank the people from NBC. Before we do that, I do want to remind everyone that's watching on Ustream right now, make sure that you join us tomorrow at noon Pacific, 3 o'clock Eastern. We'll be back here at the NBC Universal main stage. Like Andy said, I want to thank the folks here at NBC Universal, our great friends here at NBC Universal. And I want to remind you to watch the 2010 Olympic Games in Vancouver this winter. They're going to have great coverage, and we hope that you'll join NBC for that event. We also, of course, want to thank Sharp, the folks over there, for sponsoring the Sharp Blogger Lounge. Yep. This is unheard of, folks. For those of you that are in the new media space, Sharp has invested and made that space available to do me new media creators, and they should be applauded. And make sure you check out their products at sharp.com. Yeah. We'll definitely have some product reviews about Sharp, too. They yeah, got absolutely. some pretty cool yeah, we do, television we did, technology. We did a couple of interviews, uh, one uh, over the uh, solar car that they, uh, that they sponsored and built. Yes, absolutely. and that won the, uh, all the, uh, the race across Australia. Yes. Our yep. continent, transcontinental race. Uh, that was the vehicle that won. Yes. And of course, we don't want to forget to uh, to thank John Acarino for inviting us up here today to do this event and uh, to bring this coverage to you here live from CES. It's been our pleasure, Andy. Go ahead and give your uh, call sign, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Andy McCaskey from SDR News for the Tech Podcast Network. Jeffrey, really quick. Thank you to the staff. Oh, yeah, our great staff our back great here. Staff. And you're going to have fun watching our behind the scene videos. Like, we were running around here like your chickens without cutouts. It's going to be funny. But, Jeffrey? Jeffrey Powers from geekazine.com. And, of course, my name is Todd Cockrell from geeknewcentral.com, a member of the Tech Podcast Network. And this has been a Tech Podcast Network uh, production. Thank you all very much. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. And from the team here, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Starting your own computer business could not be easier with GoToAssist Express, an easy and secure remote support solution purpose-built for individuals, small businesses, and professionals who need to support clients. With the click of your mouse, start a support session. Your client simply enters the code you give them on the FastSupport.com website. With their permission, you have the same access to their computer that you have of your own. You can examine programs, 
check and modify control panel settings. Codasys Express gives you full access to their desktop. Need deeper access? Run the GoToAssist Express diagnostic application to get a system summary, application list, processes, programs that start when the computer starts, network connections, devices, services, along with installed applications, and much, much more. Easily send and receive files back and forth between your and your client's computer. Have another support request come in and need to do two support sessions at the same time? You can run multiple support sessions with GoToAssist Express. Included is an interactive chat client. As you can see, the menu bar of the GoToAssist Express gives you everything you need to do online support. To try GoToAssist Express right now, free for 30 days, you must visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. That's gotoassist.com slash techpodcast for a free trial.